Good morning, Mr. Magpie. And welcome back to Tony Northeastern. Yeah, I'm going a little bit loopy, I think. <laughs> right, so here we are, another episode of building this signal box. Um, there's only one thing left to do, and that's the interior. But although I did have a couple of suggestions in the comments um, to add some moss on the roof, just maybe on this side, which is a good idea, and maybe to add a bird's nest or even a pigeon or two. So, yeah, but we shall see. We'll do that in the final stages once the interior is done. So, that's what we're going to do next. We're going to head over to the bench and see what I've got lined up for the interior. Right, so here we are, way back at the bench, and I'm looking at this. Um, internal view of a signal box. Quite a few things um, I've noticed about this signal box. Firstly, how low the windows are to the floor. That can't be no more than about a foot. Maybe a foot and a half. Um, so they're quite tall windows on signal boxes. Um, Yes, uh, we've got 21 levers in this signal box. I think it's just a typical signal box. Um, some of them, obviously, the bigger ones have more levers, but um, this is roughly about the size of what we've got at Yarra Road. What's interesting is the variant on colours um, from yellows, reds, blacks, and browns to white. The white one here has got no. Um, no significant marking on it to say what it does. Um, but here we have the home main outer on the upline, and then over there we have the home main inner on the downline. Um, notice how some of these handles have been cut off. Uh, no idea why that, that's like that. I suppose it's visually so the signal one can see straight away at a glance that when he's in a rush to pull the handle he's pulling the right lever across I'm not sure maybe some of you signalmen can um, let me know in the comments but there we go that's given me the basic idea on um, painting the levers um, and I've just got to put that into practice for what I might have at Jarrah Road so I just thought, and here we have another image. I thought I'd show you this because um, almost all signal boxes are, are different depending where they are um, and, and what region they're from. Um, what's noticeable about this one is with the two flags that we have here, the yellow for warning and red for danger, the two. So that's interesting to see. And also we have a token box here. Um, so that, that's a little bit interesting and then we have the um, track layout on this board up here whether that will be light, lit up or not um, might have been later on when they add um, light signals and got rid of the semaphores but um, yeah and uh, you notice he's got a nice cosy bench over there there's a fire bucket just there look so that might be worth uh, a note um, yeah so I thought, I thought I'd show you this because it's slightly different to the one that we just looked at here is the kit that I'm going to use um, for detailing the interior of the signal box um, it's a ratio kit 553 and um, as you can see there's, there's lots of uh, detail already made for me so it's going to save me a, a little bit of time um, so I don't have to make so much, as it were. Um, yeah, it's got uh, 21 levers, believe it or not. So it's roughly what we saw in, in the photograph. Um, there's some parts of this kit that I won't use. Um, for instance, uh, this handle here. But, um, that's for the old um, level crossing gate. Uh, as you know, Jarrah Road hasn't got 
uh, a level, level crossing gate that close. So, um, oh, it's got a little bucket uh, and other bits and pieces. It's got a stove. Um, if I add that, I'm going to have to put a little stove pipe through the roof, uh, which is it's, it's not that hard to do. I just got to um, add a little bit of a plastic pipe and then paint it black. Um, yeah, so maybe you could use that to make this cup of tea on. Um, but as for instructions, let's have a look. I don't think there's a lot in the way of instructions. No, no instructions. Okay, just got the pictures to go by. So I'll pick out the desk, I'll have the desk, uh, the chair, uh, the cabinet. So yeah, I'll probably use most of that, except the the wheel there for the um, level crossing gates. Right, so the first part I'm going to do is this framework here. So I'm going to glue all that together along with this piece here. And then I can paint that as one piece. And uh, yeah, so just very gently removing these parts from the um, flashing and just making sure that they are clean from any of the little bits of plastic that we have trimmed um, when we removed it just trim off all the access bits so we've got a left and a right hand stand um, that just must just fit in there, inside there, like so, because uh, without the instructions and that front um, fascia with all the dials on, that will just go in there on that recessed edge, so we can glue that together, and that will make up the bulk of the frame. So we'll do that first and that will give us an indication how that sits underneath. Right, so I've glued those four pieces together. The two uprights, um, the top shelf and the fascia board with all the dials and indicators on. But, um, just trying to keep these legs square. I might put a bit of plastic in between these two uprights to keep them square because that one just wants to keep pulling away. As you can see there, it just wants to keep pulling away. But yeah, so that's the first four parts together. Um, you've got to keep these pieces to the back. I'm looking at the pho photograph. But yeah, so that's the first part. Right, I've started to put this uh, cabinet together and I've noticed there's no back for it. So I'm going to have to make a, a back with a piece of plastic just to put in there because uh, you never know, this might go up against a, a window or, or something depending on where I decide to put it in the signal box and we don't want to see a, an open back. Uh, it's highly unlikely but uh, you never know. <laughs> so I shall glue this on and um, do some measuring, just, that's the top of Do some measuring and um, make a back for it. Right, so I've added a supporting bar across the top of this frame and that should help keep it square. And it sits just nicely inside the lugs on the bracket, let me show you. There, you can just see, it just sits nicely inside there. And that just keeps the whole um, frame square, especially while I'm handling in it. Um, so, yeah. And as for the cupboard, I have now stuck a back on it. Right, so those are almost ready for painting. Um, looking at the other bits, uh, I've got a box here. Or oh, is it a safe? It looks like a safe. 
So, yeah, again, <laughs> the safe is not safe because it hasn't got a back on it. <laughs> um, um, so I'll probably put it back on that as well. Um, as for the armchair, the armchair doesn't seem to have a seat unless that's it there. It's probably it there. I'll probably just make a seat around the edges over and it'll look comfy then. And uh, yeah, we're getting there. Right, as you can see, I've been looking at more interiors. Um, this time I found this one with a fireplace. Quite a nice, neat looking fireplace. So I won't be using the fireplace that came with the kit, the, um, the little pot stove as it were. So I'll just be keeping that for a, uh, another signal box because um, I've got quite a few signal boxes I've got to build for this layout so I'm going to save that for that. And uh, I'm just looking at the differences in the various signal boxes. No two signal boxes are the same. Um, as you can see, all right, this looks like it's been a refurbished one, but it's, it's just that, that there's just so many variants. Out of all the kit, these are the parts I'm going to use. So we're almost ready for painting. I mean, what I've done here with some of the parts, I stuck the chair here on a piece of blue tack so I can hold it and paint it without uh, getting paint on my fingers and I've done the same with this um, box or safe um, so I might leave it that way up because looking at the shape of it on the angle there so it looks like a, a box not safe even though I put a bottom on it or a back on it so, so I'm going to use it as a, as a box Maybe it's a toolbox or somewhere where they put the um, other bits and pieces. And uh, what I've done here is with a previous kit, I've made up this clock. The clock was already made, so I've just made up this bracket. This is going to go uh, above the fireplace. So, yeah, I'm going to turn that into a clock. It's already got dial on it, all I've got to do is just paint it up. So, we're ready for painting. Um, I tend to do one colour at a time, um, instead I keep swapping backwards and forwards. So I'm doing everything I can think of that's brown. So that's furniture and any other little bits and pieces I can think of. And then we'll revert back to a different colour. Um, this is just a mixture of 186 and the yellow 34 um, and you can tone it down to various different browns you can have a light brown, dark brown just by changing how much yellow you add and uh, this is all going to be one colour and what I will do is when I come to do the back, I'll just paint the back that I've added black. So I'm trying to keep this onto the blue tack so it doesn't come off. Because as I'm painting, it's moving around. This is what I mean about the two different types of brown. So I've got uh, a lighter brown here and like a walnut colour brown there so just by changing the tone on the yellows we've moved on a little bit uh, as you can see uh, all the levers are, are painted um, in their colours I've still got to do the, the handles and the um, plates on the fronts of the um, levers as well so I haven't done them yet um, yeah, I've been beginning to find out what some of these um, levers mean. The white is for spares, the blacks is for the points, 
Um, the blue is for the locking of the points. Um, the yellow is distance, distance um, home. Um, and the brown is for the gate. Um, so I'll, I'll not be using any browns. Um, yeah, so there we are. So now we know we colours. Um, the the plate that the um, levers go into, I've glued a little bit of cord around. Um, so this is going to be the front face inside the signal box. I've noticed on some of the photographs there is a, a step there, but most of the time these are in the floor. Um, so if they're not in the floor, they've got this plate along the front. So I've glued that on there to represent the fact that it's not sunken into the floor. Um, yeah, so we're almost there, as you can see, with all the parts now. Um, the bracketry and the dials are all done on there. I've just got to do the track plan, so I'm going to wait for the paint to go off before I do do that. And then, okay, so the paint is dry, and I've added the track plan. As you can see, so this is um, ready to go into the signal box, and it will sit just in front of the windows there, like so. If I just show you that, so yeah, and then the next thing to go in will be the lever frames. Uh, still waiting for the paint to dry on these. So, yep, so we can do that now. If I turn the signal box around, I've already stuck um, some of the kit in. Uh, if we look closely there, you can see the clock on the chimney breast. You can see the chair and the cupboard there with the lamp and the books are on the wall. So there's uh, quite a bit of detail in there already. Right, so I'm now starting to add the levers into this lever frame. Um, just like the photographs, I've kept the spare on the end and then the home um, distance and then two interlocking levers. Um, so yeah, but we're getting there. This is the last part to do to the um, detailing um, of the signal box. Um, so I'm putting in a point lever now, which is the black, and then I'll put in a blue one next door to it. I'm just, uh, I haven't um, painted the plates yet, uh, white which are in the front there, so I haven't painted those yet. I thought I'd wait until they're all in and it'd be a lot easier to paint if they're all in here inside this lever frame. So tight. Right, so with the levers in, all I'm doing now is just painting up these plates on the front of the levers. I think they're for indicators to what these levers of four. So I'm just painting them white. And then uh, the next time you see these will be inside the signal box. Be interesting to see how much we'll be able to see when the roof's on. Right, so that's the levers um, painted, finished off now with the um, plates as well, yeah, ID plates, they're all painted. So that's now ready to go into the signal box. And um, it's looking pretty decent in there at the moment with all that detail. So we'll drop these in and then um, we'll let you have a proper look before I uh, put the roof on.
Right, so who lives in a house like this? <laughs> right, so let's have a look around. Um, as you can see, you can see the cupboard, the books, the chair, the clock on the wall. And uh, the... looks like a tool chest, which I thought was the safe, but uh, there you go. And uh, there is Pete, Pete Pullman, the guy who's going to operate and run this signal box. So let's just turn the signal box round and we can have a look at the detail that we'll probably never see. So there you go. So there's all the levers and all the bells and, and uh, indicators and obviously the, the track plan. So yeah, I think that's a lot of detail that signal box. Right, so I've had a little bit of a tinker with the roof and um, to darken the, the roof down I've just added some black and green and just highlighted a few tiles here and there and it's um, taken that clean edge off of it. Um, and as you can see it com comes complete with a pigeon big fat pigeon by the looks of it <laughs> and for the rear of the roof I've just added some green paint uh, again with a little bit of black just to make it look a bit greeny and slimy so yeah so that's the signal box finished as it is. I've now placed the signal box on its base um, temporarily because uh, yeah, we're not quite finished just yet. We're going to look into this space here. Um, a few months back I took a trip up to the Great Central Railway and uh, at the Loughborough Central Railway Station there's a signal box and on the side of that signal box, on the left hand side before you go up the stairs, there's a coal state. Um, it has, did have a little bit of coal in it because I managed to have a look inside of it uh, but I didn't take any pictures of it but if you google it Loughborough Central um, signal box you'll see what I'm talking about um, and my guessing is the signalman will come down fill his bucket up with coal uh, to use on his fire inside the signal box so that's what I'm going to do here um, so I'm going to use this cobblestone sheet, cut it to shape to fit this gap and make this little cold state. Um, I remember it being just about the height of me so it's about 20, um, 20 millimeters high I'd imagine and it's not that big but when I looked inside there was coal in there, nothing else, just coal. So you don't often see that alongside a signal box. So that's what I'm going to do there. It just adds something of an interest. I've trimmed up my base to fit the gap between the signal box and the water tower. So what I'm doing is to match what I've already done with the other two bases I'm just putting this um, curbing edge on um, I've already cut back the ballast that's already there, so I've just got to shape this to meet the curve of this base and then glue this in. What I'm going to do, I'm going to leave it slightly long so I can trim it before I um, fit it permanently in there. Just got to tweak this to try and get rid of as many gaps as possible. So I've got a little bit of a gap there, so if I just bend that in there and push that back there, that should fill in that gap there. I think it will. Just got to keep teasing it. And then pull that round. Yeah, that, that'll do. It's a bit... Uh, yeah, it's a bit... Uh, Ziggy zaggy, but it uh, fills in the gap. The curb stones glued on, and it took a while to get them to actually adhere to the, the plastic, but yeah, it, it's worked. 
and uh, we're coming back to using the old Will's um, planking sheets for the coal stay or coal bunker. Um, so I've already cut my pieces so it's not very tall as you can see if you put old matey boy up against it it's just roughly a chest height which I think that's what it was uh, when uh, I was at the Great Central and I had a look at it so there you go that's roughly about chest height so what I'm doing here is I'm going to overlap the sides I'm going to glue these together and leave a little lap there same with the back and then just glue all this lot together and hopefully we'll end up with some neat edges so what I've done. And this is what it looks like fully assembled um, as you can see you can quite silly see the planking um, the corners what I'm going to do with the corners I'm going to use some one mil strip and create posts so it looks like there's posts keeping up the planking and then we'll just fill it with some coal so all I'm doing now is just adding these one mil strips and it just looks like there's posts supporting the planking now the one mil strips is one mil by 0.25 styrene strips so I'm just putting them uh, at equal spacings and if I turn it around you can see them there as well not too worried about the, the gaps because that's all going to be painted in so one last post and what I'll do is I'll put some, some of these on the inside as well doing that it just changes the appearance of the cold state come bunker and I'll put a few more on the inside on here on this back wall so here it is all painted up and the colors I use is a brown 186 matte and a matte 67 grey mixed them together and then just added a little bit of light grey just to bring out the the wood in it uh, the colouring of the wood um, obviously I've got to blacken it down yet with uh, a black matte so it looks like there's been coal in there I have used a darker brown on the inside as you can see so yeah so that's it that's the coal state done so I've just got to add a little bit of coal uh, to finish it off and then we can right so we finished the coal bunker now or staves um, just by adding some woodland scenics um, ballast with some granulated coal to give a little bit of sparkle here and there and that kind of finishes that off along with a few detailing touches like a shovel, fire bucket and bin so this is ready to go onto the layout now and right along the edge there I've added some more coal Meanwhile, going back to the signal box, I've stuck one last detail in to the signal box. I think it was a suggestion from one of you guys. Um, as you can see, we've got the signalman there, but if you look closely on the chair, you'll see a puppy or a dog. Let's just see if we can zoom in there without losing focus. Yeah, losing focus there you go but you can see it just there on the chair 
Right, so now we'll put all these little pieces onto the layout and we'll see what it looks like. Now that we have the cold stay in place, um, that completes this project and the signal box. Now then, how much detail can we actually see inside of the signal box? Well, we can see Pete the signalman. We can see Spot the dog right at the back there on the seat. If we can look close enough without going out of focus. I mean, if you look through that window, we can probably see him on the chair. There he is, right at the back there. So, was it worthwhile adding all that detail in there? I think so. Um, yeah. So I'm asking myself as well, is this a prototypical signal box? Because it's, it's a mixed bag of details. Um, and where would you possibly see this signal box? Um, having a stone base like that, would you see it in Cornwall maybe? Because they've, they've got a lot of stone um, work down that way, maybe on the Great Western where they have a lot of stone buildings and maybe in the Bath area or something like that but um, yeah it's, it's different that's for sure and um, yeah and it just adds to this scene if we just come back a bit we can see the whole area coming to life now. Right, so that's a, another project completed. So where do we go from here? Well, the um, Jarrah Road itself needs street lightning, so we could uh, maybe have a look at that. Or we could have a look at actually adding some signals to this area, because um, that's what's missing. Um, so yes, yeah, so we're not quite finished with Jarroid yet. And it remains to, to be seen where we go from here. But until then, take care everybody, and we'll see you again next time. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now. Bye.